of the Polish National Catholic Church. We will be taking most of the Mass propers from the <coughs> sacrifice of the Mass as compiled by Bishop Francis Hoder. And we will begin on page 41. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of your conscience. <clears throat> for your penance for the next three nights, besides offering a morning and an evening prayer, to take one of the three readings as prescribed by the Church on this, the Solemnity of the Institution of the Polish National Catholic Church. And so, therefore, let us proceed and recite the Act of Confession together. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ the Blessed Mother Mary, the holy apostles, martyrs, and faithful who have lived, suffered, and died for the gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to the Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And our cry you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart we may worthily fulfill this holy action established in remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said that where two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through the, this holy liturgy we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. Amen. The 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing that I lack. In green pastures you let me graze. To safe waters you lead me. You restore my strength. You guide me among the right path for the sake of your name. He sets the angel before me as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you call the humble priest, Father Francis Hodder, to be your servant and to awaken your people for work in your vineyard. Grant that as we observe the anniversary of your call to us, our faith may be firm and our hearts may be enkindled by the fire of sacrificial love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Eric, will you please come and proclaim the word? Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. When they see him, they will be shaken with dreadful fears, and they will be amazed at his unexpected salvation. They will speak to one another in repentance and in anguish of spirit they will groan and say, this is the man who we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach. We fools, we thought that his life was madness and that his end was without honor. Why has he been numbered among the sons of God? And why is his lot among the saints? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. So gradual. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord my God, I cry out to you, and you hear me, Lord. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol, you kept me from going down to the dead. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocr hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. I praise you, Lord, for you have raised me up and did not let my enemies triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. To, you kept me from going down into the pit. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus spoke unto his disciples. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is who bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done. For you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples this is the gospel of the Lord May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, non forevermore. Amen. Nick Benjamin Pophelonius is Christus. I am the vine, you are the branches. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel. On this, the solemnity of the institution of the Polish National Catholic Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. How appropriate are the selections of Scripture. <clears throat> we take the first reading from the Book of Wisdom. As we hear the word proclaimed, who do you think that these words are being addressed concerning a certain individual. It's the organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church, Father Francis Holder, who became a bishop, the first bishop, and the organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church. You know, I read a couple of weeks ago in the Springfield Republican about how there are some churches in the area that are up for sale. Whether it be in Ware or Springfield or Holyoke. But you know, after 127 years, even though we have lost membership, the Polish National Catholic Church is still strong. It is based on the principles of the Word of God. 
which front which Bishop Holder actually made a sacrament. You know, we are celebrating this year the 95th anniversary of the founding of Holy Name of Jesus. When you consider the edifice that has been entrusted to our care, from the early organizers, the founders of this church, they had a vision built upon the principles and the tenets of, first of all, Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, Bishop Hulder was the founder of the Polish National Catholic Church. He was not the founder. Jesus Christ was the founder. He organized at a time in which poor Polish immigrants would come and set, settle in communities, would build churches, and then would go to the Roman Catholic diocesan bishop and ask that the altars of the church be consecrated. The answer was the same. Whether it was in Chicago or Buffalo or Scranton, or here in New England, the response was, first, you need to sign your property over to me. And to this day, the understanding that the diocesan bishop is the executor of the estate. Well, Bishop Holder wanted to do it a little bit differently, he created what was known as a synod, which exists from the very beginning and is held every four years. It is not one individual who decides how a church should be owned or run. It is up to the people. We are all godparents of this church. We all have an equal share in as being a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stop to think about what kind of trials and tribulations this young priest had to endure. <coughs> there were some that said that this man whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach we fools. Bishop Holder, placing his emphasis on the Word of God, was to go forward, be consecrated by the Old Catholic Church of the Union of Utrecht, which brought into our church what is known as apostolic succession. If you were to attend a Roman Catholic service, in the back of the missalette, you will find that the only two exceptions for people of faith to receive Holy Communion in the Roman Catholic Church are the Orthodox and members of the Polish National Catholic Church. Our sacraments and our Holy Priesthood are considered valid. And over the years, there have been changes. One of the things that Bishop Hodder wanted was that the language of the church would be the language of its people. Not too many people know that in the very beginning, the first missile that was used was written in Latin. Until Father Krupski in the 30s, through the approval of Bishop Hodder, created a Polish missile. And in 1952, another missile was written, this time in the English language. Bishop Holder also felt it was important to have an altar facing the people. 
instead of his back to the people. He wanted to share the most important sacrament that we have, the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. There are some churches that will say, well, we understand that the Holy Eucharist is a symbol, a recre uh, recreation, an ordinance. But Bishop Holder, listening to the Word of God and meditating on the Word of God and looking at the early church fathers of the Christian church, said it was a mystery. We don't know exactly how it changes, but we do know at the words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood, that there is a change that takes place. How unworthy any member of the clergy thinks upon themselves as being the one that consecrates or forgives sins or baptizes by their own individuality. Bishop Pulder came to bring to each and every single one that has become members of the Polish National Catholic Church a treasure that we sing about as we recall Tilevatmi Chiopania, which was the hymn and is the hymn of the Polish National Catholic Church. And so, following this morning's Mass, we will gather for an annual parish meeting. There will be reports given by people who truly love the Church and are dedicated to the Church and take the time to come within the sacred walls of this edifice to be instilled by the teachings, the Word of God, and by the Holy Spirit that exists. In conclusion to this brief homily, I share with you one of the greatest documents that was given to us by our late Prime Bishop and First Bishop, Francis Holder is called a Confession of Faith. It is included in this week's bulletin. And I ask that you please take the time to read. You know, after Jesus' ascension, he first promised that the Holy Spirit would be the teacher and to bring to mind all the things that Jesus taught us. And so we look to the Holy Spirit the source of life. And we read from the Confession of Faith. In Bishop Holder's words, he writes, I believe that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, rules the world in the natural as well as in the moral order, that all the laws of the universe as well as those by which the soul of individual man in humanity as a whole are guided, are an emanation of the will, the goodness, and righteousness of divine being. He further goes on to write, I believe that, the Holy, that from the Holy Spirit flows grace, that in invisible power which brings it to pass, that when a man cooperates, or a woman, and works in harmony with it, the Holy Spirit, they become better, more perfect, better fitted for their task, a participant in the peace of heart and soul, until one day through union with God in eternity, he finds infinite bliss in the fulfillment of his or their own being. He further goes on to say, I believe in the need of uniting all followers of Christ's religion into the one body of God's church. 
He goes on to say that I believe that every true Christian should take an active and a vital part in the spiritual life of the church through the hearing of the Word of God, through the receiving of the sacraments, through fulfilling the laws and regulations established by Christ and his apostles as defined and given to us by the church. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, what spiritual insight we have as a heritage from our first organizer, the first bishop, the first prime bishop of our church. <coughs> May we go forward as he always proclaimed, and may we depend upon the Word of God to bring us enlightenment, illumination, and what we know as eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised, now and forevermore, Amen. I be believing one on God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be not not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty your arm, strong your hand, your right hand is ever exalted. Justice and judgment are the foundation of your throne. Love and loyalty march before you. Happy the people who know you, Lord, who walk in the radiance of your love. Please be seated. <laughs>
my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to as we labor to build your holy church. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you and celebrate your calling forth of the Polish National Catholic Church through which you call us. To, every, to carry the light of Christ to all people. Through word and sacrament we encounter Christ and receive your grace to bring the church to its fullest stature. As the true teacher of human society, destined to reach its perfection in heaven. And so therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your Holy Church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide it throughout the world together with its priests and all true believers of the Holy Faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. In all present in this congregation imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule and fatherly love, wholeheartedly this day we unite in spirit with all those beginning with the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles and with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause for which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believed, professed, and were united with you through prayer in this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world, and in time has fulfilled through Jesus Christ, and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation, so we to this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a long for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with it a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold of giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, or bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterward, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those for whom he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way and the truth and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me and my words take part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these, in other words, of the archpriestly prayer in holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we are servants and your faithful people in the remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with joyful countenance is from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest of Christ, grant everlasting light. And to those who during life strayed from the path of righteousness and mindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shortened their sufferings. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things.
through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Amen. Our Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May Peace of the Lord be always with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. For those of you who will not be receiving the Eucharist sacramentally, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. 
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
so I also love you. Remain in my love. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our merciful Father, grant that as we benefit from the grace received in this holy sacrament, we may follow your holy will as we continue to build your holy church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Worship be pleasing to your most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effected for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Amen. Francis Slither, 
all the bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as all the early organizers of all the parishes, and especially of Holy Name of Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 